Hello, I'm futurist Amelia Coleman, and today I am thrilled to be joined by some very special guests. We are going to do a panel discussion on taking responsibility, technology in the modern age. I have had the honor of being a mentor to these three lovely people over the last six months through the All Tech is Human mentorship program. All Tech is Human is a nonprofit at the forefront of the responsible technology movement. And their aim is to bring together stakeholders to expand the responsible tech ecosystem so we can all help to co-create a better technology future. I'm so lucky to have gotten to know and work with these three fantastic panelists over the last six months. Together, we cover four countries, the UK, US, Croatia, and Iceland, and bring with us very different and unique backgrounds, ideas, and visions. Today, we're going to discuss what it means to be a responsible technology advocate, as well as introduce some new and exciting projects and share some tips on how we can all be more responsible in our use of technology and be leaders in our own communities. So to begin, I would like to invite you all to introduce yourselves. Patrick, would you like to introduce yourself? Yes, yes, of course. So hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Patrick and I am an actor, writer, and podcaster. And I tell stories about the intersection of humanity and technology. I, it's really my, my dream and my passion to use entertainment and storytelling to provoke debate about the impact of new technologies on the future of our lives. It's very exciting to be here. Um, my name is Kamisra. I live in Iceland, but I'm originally from Estonia. Um, my day job is in cybersecurity as a hacker. Um, and by night, uh, I run a startup in language technology. We're teaching Icelandic uh, with an AI powered solution. And my biggest passion is technology and how it affects the human mind and uh, mental health in general and how what, can, what we can do about it. Hi, everyone. My name is Sara. I'm a founder of Be Humane. Uh, Be Humane is a gamified learning platform for developing soft skills and healthy technology habits. We enable students to develop soft skills in both the virtual and real world by providing them guidance towards healthier technology choices. Uh, I am a researcher, so this uh, project has been started uh, based on my master's uh, results about socially and emotionally intelligent usage of technology. Thank you. Thank you. So for my first question, I would like to know a bit more about what motivated you all to get involved in the All Tech is Human community. Gamitra, if you want to start that one. Sure. I think the, um, the absolute beginning for me was the uh, Your Undivided Attention podcast. Uh, when I, like I had thought about the effect on technology on society and how we think, um, but that just made it really clear what kind of effects technology is having and what is being done about it. And I just felt like that is what I need to know more about. That is what I want to be working with. Um, and that is one of the biggest risks to humans currently, I think, because we're very rapidly moving in a direction we're not quite sure what is. Um, and I just feel like it's most important than ever to kind of realize where we're going and what we can do about it. Um, and so for me, it was one of the turning points was my experience working for a tech startup, building a platform for Gen Z, where I did a lot of market research and seeing the uh, trend of negative impact of technology usage on social and emotional development of children and youth. So I started to just dive deeper into the research and uh, somehow I came across All Tech is Human and I very much resonated with the movement of responsible tech usage join. And luckily I've met Amelia and now here we are. So back in uh, 2017, I picked up a book called Reclaiming Conversation, The Power of Talk in the Digital Age by Sherry Turkle. And Sherry Turkle, for those of you who don't know, is a uh, professor at MIT who just uh, does a lot of research on the psychology and how technology is changing the ways we interact with one another. 
And this book really resonated with me a lot. She goes as far as to say that technology is an assault on empathy. I don't know if I would go that far personally, but it really got me thinking about just the relationship that we have as human beings to technology and how much it's grown to influence our ways of being and our ways of life. And so really inspired from that book, I ended up creating a one-man show called Real, which dissected this very thing. Although with being a one-man show, it was kind of dissecting my relationship as a performer to the audience and how technology sort of interrupts that. So that's really what got me into this world. I then started a blog called The Low Tech Trek, which was really just about, okay, how can we use our tech use, or, or rather, how can we sort of observe our tech use and just be more mindful with how we're using technology in our daily lives. And it was through that blog and just through various projects I was working on that I then came to know All Tech is Human and the, and the great work that this organization is doing. So, and then have been able to meet all of you as well. So it's been great. It's been a fun journey. Great, thank you for sharing that. So one of the major parts of this mentorship program has been about getting clear about what we each as individuals can bring to this movement and what it is about us that is unique, that can have a positive influence on the future. So wondering if you can share a bit about what the experience has been like for you and where you are today with your goals. Yeah, so... At the start of this mentorship program, I just started with the Be Humane. So it was very early for us to start exploring what, what are others that are doing in the space and how they're contributing to responsible tech movement. And by just diving deeper into uh, the All Tech is Human community and creating um, another relationships with people in the startup world that are also building similar things. Uh, we kind of dived from wanting to create a pitch deck and a business model for Be Humane to being here now accepted into a launch house Web3 cohort for uh, which is a startup incubator. So I can say that this experience has been very beneficial for me and uh, my career and our journey with Be Humane. And we can say that in this last uh, six months or so, how long was the program for? We have... Um, did the pilot testing with 50 students and have them uh, go through our educational program. And now we're also our testing and developing our metaverse game with uh, 30 students from across the globe. So this experience has brought a lot with a lot of impact coming from Amelia and her willingness to help us outside of our meeting times and contribute to our journey. It really has been a, a fascinating journey going through this mentorship program. I think what's been the most beneficial for me is just continuing to hone in on focusing what, what I could bring to this world and what, what I could bring to the All Tech is Human movement. I think that's what's really been beneficial is that, and I sort of was starting to discover this before the mentorship program, but through conversations with all of you and, and specifically Amelia, it's really been about, okay, how can I tap into my uniqueness as an individual, specifically as an artist as well, as someone who comes from a creative background and be able to tell stories that are going to resonate with people and really raise awareness about how we're using technology and how we're interacting with one another as technology continues to advance. I'm very excited. There's a, a musical that I've been working on called The Startup. We had a staged reading back in November and actually through the mentorship program, I've been working on developing this piece and writing and rewriting and editing music and writing new music. And we'll be putting up a reading uh, in August and uh, another reading rather uh, to present this new new version of the show to not only our cast and crew, but also to potential producers as well. And this program has been really just this great reminder. And a big reason why I love All Tech is Human so much is that 
it encourages people from many different backgrounds to talk about technology. I think that this program has shown me that my voice does matter in this space. Sometimes I feel like, oh, you know, I'm not a technologist. You know, I didn't work at Google for 10 years. What, do, what, you know, what, what does, does my voice mean anything? And I think this mentorship program and, and specifically just the, the conversations I've had with Amelia, it's, it's grown to show me that everyone is going to learn about these things from a different point of view both myself as well as people who are just entering into this field. And so if we can reach them through amazing organizations like Be Humane or All Tech is Human or through the various talks that you do, uh, Amelia, or if it's going to see a show, I think that it, that's what really hypes me up about All Tech is Human and really motivates me to stay track to stay on track with my goals of just creating, 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 because you never know who it's going to impact. So yeah, All Tech is, soon is doing some amazing work and getting multiple voices involved from many different walks of life. So great to hear. Um, so for me, um, because my like positive technology projects have always been kind of a side thing, um, this project, uh, this mentorship mostly offered me the peer pressure to actually follow up and actually dedicate time um, to the difficult things, but the things I really care about. And I kind of went full circle in this program. So I started with two projects, uh, one being a uh, nonprofit in Iceland for humane technology, and the other being a manual like an interactive book um, for people looking to build better relationships with technology. And as I worked on them for these past months, um, I realized both are not the ideal solutions for what we need. So in terms of the nonprofit, um, if this is, is to succeed, um, it really has to find its niche in Iceland. Um, like, how can we impact what's happening in the world here in the tiny Iceland? Uh, really need to figure out like what our strategy is to actually, for this to have maximum impact. Uh, and with the, um, the manual, I realized people that need to change the most are not the target group for intervention like this. Um, people that are in the biggest danger or in or have biggest risk associated with uh, negative technology use are people that are not ready to help themselves. They're people that really need systemic interventions and um, we need to really change how things work from outside to be able to help those people. So I kind of, yeah, as I said, I went full circle. I'm back at not exactly know what I'm doing, but I feel like this is nevertheless being great. Um, and I feel like I've followed up on my commitment uh, for better technology. So I'm happy with that. Awesome. Yes. No, you guys have all come a long ways and done some amazing things. And wherever you are at right now is where you're supposed to be, you know. And um, and I know that each one of you has something very unique to bring to what you're going to contribute to this world in the future. So. Um, I wanted to touch on your advice for people who understand that we need to set better examples when it comes to our uses of technology and, and maybe anything that you might have as far as insights go on to, on what people might be able to do if they're feeling overwhelmed or like I'm just one person or they don't know where to begin. What's your advice for them? I think the thing that has really helped me out a lot is to have, and I guess this comes from being someone who I, I like to create things, is to have a, to the best of your ability, have a creation mindset over a consumption mindset. So I think it's becoming easier and easier to consume, 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 consume. 
whether it's scrolling on, on LinkedIn and seeing what everyone else in your world is accomplishing or just scrolling through Instagram or TikTok or something like that and just uh, endlessly consuming what you're, you're seeing. But I think if you just take a minute and say, okay, what can I create or what can I contribute? Even if it is just the, the smallest thing possible, I think that just kind of helps retrain our brains into being people who are uh, sharing something with the world that is important to us. And it, I think it also just allows us to look at technology differently as well. I think that it allows us to see technology as a tool for, for talking about things that are important as opposed to this numbing device that we use whenever we're bored or whenever we just wanna turn off our minds. I think it, that has a place too, for sure. But I think if we're able to go into our relationship with technology and improving the ways in which we interact with technology, I think going in with a creation mindset could really prove to be beneficial in the long run, whether it is you know, just writing up a quick blog post, or maybe it's a, a podcast that is only five minutes long, or, or maybe it's, you know, creating a short little video about you talking about something that you're passionate about. I, I think when we start doing that, and I'm kind of saying this to myself as well, too, is that when, when we're able to change our relationship to technology in that way from a creation standpoint instead of a primary instead of just a consumption standpoint then I, I think that just changes it, it's a compounding effect it, it changes our relationship with technology over time so uh, advice for people ah oh, there's such so many things uh, but i think the general like the core point in all this is that when we use technology to escape, as Patrick said, um, when it's our refuge from the world we don't really want to be in, um, we should pay attention to how we're doing in life or like our health in general. Um, you know, are we sleeping enough, exercising enough, and eating enough? Uh, definitely, if we manage to like take control of what we do uh, and our brains, then our decisions become more conscious. We can choose to stop scrolling. Um, and definitely, like, we need to take away the need to escape. But also, yeah, we need to destroy the manics, mechanics that are making us escape uh, in such an addictive fashion. But that's a much bigger problem that an individual can solve. Um, but also just read up on this. Uh, listen to your undivided attention. Uh, check all the resources all Tech is Human or the Center for Human Technology are putting out. Like there's so much knowledge out there about um, what is going on. And I think the more one reads up, the more conscious one becomes of what's happening and how each individual fits into the picture of making this go into a better, better direction. And also just once you've gotten to that stage, just talk to people about this. Um, ask your parents about how they feel about this, ask your friends and like kind of, we all know most people post on Instagram to get likes, but no one says it out loud. Like we don't talk about it. We all do it, but we don't we don't say anything. But let's talk about it. You know, let's actually like uncover our selfish motives for why we do stuff and talk about it. And maybe that will be the change we need. So that everyone knows that everyone knows. You know, maybe that's that's something we can all do. Yeah, interesting. Great advice, is definitely. Um, yeah, to your point, Amelia, the techno stress is real. Like that's, it's called a modern disease of today's about inability to cope with technology in a healthy manner. And what we've been seeing in our research is that it's uh, uh, the most, it's actually affecting the children and youth because their average daily usage is now up to eight hours per day, which has a long consequences on their psychological, behavioral, and physiological effects of their development. So what we are doing and Be Humane is that we are teaching children how to use technology in a 
purposeful manner. So some of the things that Gamitra already explained is like, for example, you said the reason, the intention, why are you going to use your device right now? And when you said the intention, you're, you have more a purpose behind it. And if you then notice that you are going in a different direction, then you can actually, the, the awareness part can come in more easily because you have in the first place decided that now for the 20 minutes, you are going to either do the focus work or you're going to have fun. So what we are teaching children is that it's important to set the intention so that at least then you can measure yourself against something that you did. And another point, which I think is really interesting, which comes from the concept from emotional intelligence is about a meta moment. So in emotional intelligence, a meta moment is a moment when you are being triggered by in a certain situation. And it's a moment where you stop and instead of reacting, you think, what would the best version of myself do at this point? And this is something that we are having as a part of the program where we're teaching children that instead of thinking like, so for example, you're focusedly doing something in your, in your technology device, you can either work or, you know, chatting with people and you get this constant distractions coming from your phone or from emails. So it's like that moment of like, Am I going to continue using technology with the purpose and with the focus and stay in what I was doing, or am I going to go and react? So when you have that moment of stop to think what you would do if you were the best version of yourself, you are giving yourself the opportunity to become that. And one other aspect, which I think is really important, is that to think about what are our value systems in life and how is our technology usage and time we spend reflecting those values like if you're saying that for you it's self-development or friends like what are you doing then spending hours on tiktok or i don't know some other platform so i think that it's really important just to think about those aspects of what is important for me in life and the direction that i'm taking and then seeing how the technology usage is reflecting that All very good advice, guys. And I think articulating it, being able to say everything that all the points that you all just made is so important. And, and like you said, Gamitha, talking about it to people and having these conversations and not being afraid to have them, you know, we're all part of this movement, I think, you know, as once you know, you can't kind of go back. So we all have a responsibility to, um, to make sure that we are leading by example, I think. So now I wanna go kind of big picture, ask a tough question, which is what is your biggest fear for the future? And what is your biggest hope in the context of technology? Go. So for me, rationally, it's uh, unbounded artificial intelligence. Like all the threats coming from artificial intelligence that we haven't actually that we do, are just just being able to beginning to understand um just having read up on this a bit just makes me ridiculously scared um but emotionally my biggest fear is lack of empathy or losing empathy as patrick said earlier that um, technology could be a threat to empathy um i feel like the more we reprogram our society um, to respond to different incentives and different kind of structures of communication, I feel like we just keep losing some parts of us that are human. I'm kind of afraid society will become something less human, something more blocked in and um, just scared of that. Um, but that's also kind of the universe of my biggest hope that with better technology, with better ways to communicate, um, we'll be more actually more connected. Everyone will have access to resources uh, and education and knowledge and you know health. Uh, and I hope we can just build a more equal society, a more equal world. I think technology can de definitely offer us that to like give us all a very little playground and like help us be our best selves. I kind of agree with the Gamitra. I've been also thinking a lot about the artificial intelligence, but more so about 
what is going to happen when robots are going to become the integrated part of our society, when we are going to have little robot pets and friends. And, you know, just when that aspect becomes more prevalent in our society, because I think that we are definitely going down that direction. And as well as, you know, the idea about putting chips into our brain and how like previously, you know, our parents didn't think that we're going to be walking around with these devices glued to our hands all the time. And they would think like, oh, that's a crazy idea. And I think that we are now also thinking, oh, it's a really crazy idea, thinking that we would have a chip in our head. But I think that as things are evolving and it's becoming more normal that we are we're adopting technology in so many different aspects of our life that who knows, maybe that's going to become a new normal. So that's kind of the part where I'm fearing that, you know, if we don't have preventive programs that are going to help people, especially children, to learn how to coexist with technology, that some of those things can go in a very wrong direction. So I think that my biggest hope is that more, more and more people are going to become aware of the importance of educating ourselves about our technology habits and our technology usage and how to make sure that as technology evolves, which it will, and as it becomes even in, more integrated part of our society, we have certain measures that are put in place for that. Yeah. So my, my general hope is that uh, people are going to learn how to uh, coexist with technology in a healthier manner. I uh, agree with Sarah a lot on the biggest fear. I think that as technology continues to advance, unless we balance it out, by the time we get to uh, microchips being implanted into our minds, at least to like a degree where we're able to see like augmented reality or we could like connect to the internet through our minds, instead of through a device, that's, that's like a scary concept for me because then, then humans and technology become one in a lot of ways. As many issues as we have with technology nowadays, uh, for the most part, you could argue that it's still separate from us. You know, we have our technology, we have our devices, and then we have like ourselves, our human bodies. Uh, Yuval Noah Harari in his book, Homo Deus, which is an amazing book. It's, uh, I think the subtitle is A Brief History of Tomorrow, where he talks about where, the, where humanity is heading. He talks about uh, the idea of the superhuman class, where those who are able to afford to have technology implanted into themselves, they're just going to be at such an advantage uh, economically, socially, uh, just in, in all ways possible compared to those who do not have the technology embedded within them. And that's, like a, that's a pretty scary thought. So I think, I think that to agree with Sarah, I think that my biggest fear is that we don't put in enough precautions before we get to that point. Uh, my hope is that there are, I feel like every day, and, and especially over the last few years, there are more and more people talking about like, okay, now wait a minute, let's really think about how we're designing technology. Let's make sure that we're designing technology for people. Let's make sure that we're not creating technology that is using people. I think that the more that we're having these conversations, the smarter we're going to be as a society in how we create technology moving forward. My hope is that we just don't get too ahead of ourselves like we tend to when creating technology and that we don't think of the potential consequences and downsides of technologies that we're creating. So it's, it's my, I'm hopeful that these conversations seem very uh, fruitful. They, they seem very common nowadays in the last few years. So it's my hope that as we do advance technologically, as we will continue to do, that we're just so much more mindful in how the technology is designed. Thank you. Thank you all for your input and your visions. So finally, if you can briefly tell us what's next for you and also 
if people want to follow your progress and where you're going, how's the best way for people to get in touch? Our next steps are going to the market on, in September when we're going to go into some private schools here in the uh, U.S. and also in Europe. And we're also preparing to do a research that is going to address the question of how are we going to interact with robots one day and start building our educational program for that as well. And when it comes to how people can find me, I'm mostly active on Twitter. So I think our Twitter handles are going to be in, uh, in the notes and at behumane.co, which is our website where we put everything that we are doing. And we're also active on Twitter and LinkedIn. So probably the biggest project, as I mentioned before, that I'm working on currently is the musical. It's called The Startup. We're having a, another reading in August, but our hope after that is to put up a workshop production to invite a general audience, which is very exciting to, to come see the show. So of course, I'll be keeping everybody posted on that. Uh, and yeah, and then I have some other projects in the works as well that, you know, are still very much in the development phase that I'm sure I'll be sharing at some point soon. Uh, the best part uh, place to find me and to reach out to me is probably my website, which is patrick-mcandrew.com. You could also contact me on LinkedIn. Uh, so if you just search um, Patrick McAndrew, you should be able to find me there. And then I'm also on Instagram uh, at patrick.mcandrew as well. So for me, I think I'm still going to be on the quest of figuring out how to build technology for a better world and shift that technology for a better world. Um, I don't know how, but I'll be figuring out. And meanwhile, I'll be working on my security job and on my startup. Um, and if you want to chat about any of these things, then you can find me on Twitter at Kamisra underscore Marga or my website, Kamisra.com or LinkedIn. Awesome. Thank you all so much for sharing your stories and your time and your experience and visions with us today. I know that you have inspired me immensely, both as individuals and as a group. And I'm very proud of each and every one of you. And I can't wait to see what the future holds and what you're gonna do. So thank you all so much for everything. And thank you all too for watching and tuning in to this special panel discussion. If you enjoyed this video and are interested in content like this, please be sure to like, share, and subscribe. I'll see you next time. Thank you. Thank you. Yay. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye.